Hey guys, it is Tuesday, the 30th, and I am free from the hospital. I'm just waiting on my ride to come get us, and uh, it's actually raining here. Well, it was. It's sunny now, but it was raining, and it's really humid, so it doesn't quite feel as refreshing as I'd like rain to feel right now. But I just got discharged. Woo. Still working out some of the details on um, when I'll actually be able to come back to Shasta, but that is to be determined and it'll get figured out. So no worries. And yeah, so I just wanted to get this on film a little bit. I'm just done, out of the hospital. No more tubes. Still got my binder, my staples. By binder, I mean this big thing that's gonna make me look really, really pregnant for a while. But that's okay. It's okay, because I've got a new liver and I'm free from the hospital bed. Five days, you guys, that's insane. I was, uh, it's literally been six days since I've been in Wisconsin. And I'm free, well, I'm going to the hotel, so. It just blows my mind. It, it's mind blowing. It's all so surreal and just crazy, so. I don't even know. I don't even know right now. I will check back in with you guys later. Free. Freedom. Oh my god. Okay, well it's it's the day after what you saw yesterday. Today is Wednesday. We've been in Madison for a week. Uh, last night was a nice night. First night in the hotel room. Had air conditioning and no tubes attached to me although everything that's not white on my body is black and blue from ivs and just having been poked and prodded so many times my incision looks great though so far um it hurts but yeah. but that's kind of normal i would think with 60 some staples yeah Exactly. Oh my goodness. But anyways, I just wanted to stop in and say hi, say how, you know, things are going good so far. Happy with with my surgery and been in, it's about noon right now and I've been up and about since about eight thirty doing stuff. And I feel okay. I you know, just doing remarkably well. Yeah. I, I was feeling pretty punk last night, but that's kind of to be expected so just just a little just a little and I don't know how stubborn I am about that I'm like I feel stupid but really I, f I feel really well for someone who just had their liver replaced yeah but one thing I wanted to sit down and talk with you guys about was something that really nobody knew going into surgery and it's important and I, I just wanted to stress it um, so we all know my condition is fairly serious but I was functioning okay, I, I, was, I was alive. I wasn't going into liver failure or anything. Right. Well, apparently, so there's a vein in, in, in your body that runs here called the vena cava, yes? Yes, and it's next to the aorta. It's next to the aorta, and it's the vein that brings the blood back up from the legs and abdomen, right? Well, from the body as, uh, it has to come the deoxygenated blood after the cells have used the oxygen and all the nutrients the veins take it here is the inferior vena cava this is just a section showing how it comes through and through the middle of the liver and it would continue on the blood comes from your lower extremities and lower part of your body and areas of other parts of your body that comes through the liver it comes up and back it's going back to your heart mm -hmm. so uh what we found out was yes my my liver was involved but my vena cava was starting to become constricted by the tumors and so much so that it was 75 percent occluded and 
much more than that, and I wouldn't have made it out here. That's right. Let's say you would have been in some serious trouble. Some very serious trouble. Um, and uh, it, that's kind of hard-hitting news when you hear it, you know, it's like, you can be functioning, you know, and living so well, and that, you know, talking about it and thinking back on it, yeah, I was having some side effects of it. I just didn't think about it because I had cancer and I thought I was just having my normal side effects just kind of amplified. But um, no, I was, I was dying. I was well, just dying without going into liver failure. You were, you were still, you know, getting your blood to your liver and having it filtered. It was just, just... What happened was the tumors just got so much of them growing over the liver area, uh, the vena cava area, I'm sorry, that it basically was strangling your vena cava. There were just so many, as as uh, as you know, by the photos. Yeah. Yeah. And he said the sides were touching them, Yeah. Right? I think it was like starting to, but kind of like, like a boa constrictor constricting. Yeah. Yeah. The point is, is that if I hadn't had my surgery when I had it, um, I hmm, would have been, would have been really bad. Thank God. Wouldn't have been around maybe too much longer. And that's pretty surreal news to hear. Um, it's, it is scary, and, but it's part of this journey. But anyway, so I just, I wanted to make you guys aware of that. Um, because I was made aware of that. And like, yeah, I had a liver transplant and all, but it actually did. Not that liver transplants don't save lives, but it saved my life sooner than, than we thought. My team is amazing. Um, they're, they're all incredible. They came by multiple times yesterday before I left and hugged me and made me cry and Made me cry. Made her cry and told me how amazing I am. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. They, I don't know how they got me out of the hospital in five days. But well, you are healthy and you're young and you have youth on your side and but you were real sick going in. This is true. So, but still, but still, it's but just pretty amazing. It's a major surgery. I mean, plus I'm. I made you walk, and I made you breathe, and I made you do all these things. <laughs> I'm glad to have a physical therapist assistant as a mom, even if it is hard. She makes me do stuff that makes me get better. Really, though. Thank yeah. you. You're um, welcome. Uh, I don't know what I'd be doing without this one here. Uh, it would be hard. Just wanted to catch you guys up on that, and... and uh, I know that's that's not the fun after surgery thing you were looking to hear. I'll record more <laughs> and I'll check back in with you guys later before I post this vlog. So far for me, I think, and it has come to a point tonight, the worst part, really one of the only bad parts about this whole surgery is that every night since surgery, I think, maybe even, maybe before, I don't even, I don't remember, I have been having night terrors of, of some sort or another. And, you know, up until tonight, it was just like, I would like be falling asleep and call out and hear myself call out and wake myself up and that was just annoying because it wasn't like a dream and remember it and like be scared or it was just like I'd be like huh and like wake up and it was obnoxious and fine and like yesterday morning I woke up to mom you know kind of gently rubbing my forehead because I guess I was kind of moaning in a distressed manner in my sleep and I don't remember what I was dreaming or dreaming anything really bad. Um, I was in the woods and there were leaves. But I just woke up like 15 minutes ago out of a dream that just really got intense. 
I'm sure I can tell you a million reasons why this dream manifested the way it did. They're logical and makes sense as far as the way the brain works. I don't know what's causing me to have the night terrors. I don't know if it's like, you know, the pain medication. The fact that my body just went through something really traumatized me. Even if I don't remember it, my body does. I could tell you a million logical reasons why my brain manifested this dream the way that it did, but uh, it touched on some like really old, like childhood, you know, night terror stuff that, you know, didn't even make sense in my childhood. Um, and it touched on some adult fears and it, it, the dream just continued to escalate worse, no matter what I did. Um, without going into details, it was basically, I um, ended up waking up because I, I was trapped in, in my house in a fire and I woke myself up because I was yelling so hard in my dream. I, I wasn't, I don't think in real, in, in real life because mom would have, I wasn't outside of my body I don't think because mom would have woken up to that and she didn't. I used to be able to or I was able to at one point wake myself up out of bad dreams before I, before it got bad like that. Uh, tonight's just really shook me and I just needed to sit down and get out of the room and talk about it. Um, you know, one of these pitfalls so far that's that's been part of the surgery. Uh, and I just, like I said, there's a, there's a million things I could tell you on like why the dream manifested the way that did and no matter what I did in the dream, I couldn't stop it. Yeah, I haven't woken up in a panic like that in a while that I can remember, so. I just wanted to come, I thought maybe it would help to just come sit down, find a quiet place and sit down and talk to you guys and just talk about it and maybe it will stop. This is probably right now, this right now is probably the hardest part of this whole process has been for me. I've had pretty much nothing but, you know, happy tears leading up into this point. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to cry. But I made it a point to myself that, you know, the vlogs wouldn't be all pretty stuff. It would show the the rough stuff too. So here you go. Here's here's some rough stuff. I'm gonna go back into my hotel room, lay back down, go back to sleep, and hope that I don't have another one. your regularly scheduled programming, everybody. Well, it's me again. It's uh, not the next day, but the day after. Obviously that dream had me pretty shaken up, but I'm all right. I didn't have any night terrors last night, thank God. It's like, I think, maybe I had some, some a little bit of stress dreaming, but nothing like what I've been having the last I week. I didn't hear you moaning or anything. Moaning. That's good. Moaning, moaning. Moaning, 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 moaning. I'm not going to be able to get this vlog finished without that happening in the background, so I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> Yesterday was, a, I don't know, kind of tough on me mentally just because of the dream, but I've taken it really easy today physically. We just, all we did was go to the post office and lunch and then go back to the store real quick just to get some necessities but we were only out for a short period of time didn't do a whole lot i've started noticing some symptoms of the drugs now that i'm a little calmed down and out of the hospital but nothing serious just like oh what's that that's weird hmm, okay move on but thankfully nothing like nausea or vomiting or grossness nothing bad nothing scary Nothing painful. It's okay. Definitely something I can live with compared to what I've been living with for the last four years. So, it's all good. Uh, anyways, I just wanted to leave you guys on a good note saying that everything's going good. I'm feeling good. We have a really fun day planned for tomorrow. We're going to get our hair cut and feel pretty. And then we're going to go walk around Madison for a little bit and do a little restaurant tour thing. Feeling good overall, guys. No worries and... 
everything's going great. So, I will see you guys for the next vlog. Thank you for watching and keeping up on my story and all of the support that I've received through this has been absolutely phenomenal and mind-blowing and uh, overwhelming. Overwhelmingly great. So, I love you guys. I will see you all next vlog. Bye! One thing I wanted to add to the end of this vlog was that I got her so good the other day. What did you do? This one right here is a prankster and likes to think oh, she's being funny and doing stuff. Mm -hmm. What are some things you have tried to get away with saying and trying to pull on me since we've been here this, this week? Just since we've been here? Yeah, there's been a lot. Well, you tried to tell my husband that we couldn't have sex for six months. I thought I said a year. And then oh, I said six way. months. Whatever, whatever. Anyway, stuff like that. But I got her really good the other day because I had to go weigh myself and the scale was <laughs> out of batteries and, and she didn't come with me to the weight room to come weigh myself. True, and I was getting worried because she was gone a long time I and was, it was scaring me. I was gone for too long and I was like, hmm, I could get mom back this way because she's going to worry. I know she's going to worry. And so the guy brings the scale back and I weigh myself and go to leave the gym and she's standing there like a creeper. <laughs> no, I was just getting ready to put the card in the door so that I could go in and see if you were still there. <laughs> and I opened the door with this panicked look on my face. And I was like, I took a really nasty fall. I took a really nasty... But I couldn't keep a straight face. But I got you. You did. I got you. For like a good... At least second. <laughs> at least a second. Yeah. So I just wanted to say I'm proud of myself for that. <laughs> Bye now.